Hello and welcome to the Anatomy of Marriage podcast. I am your host, Melanie Studley. My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and today is day six of the AOM Q&A 100-day challenge. 100 days of Q&As. If you're new here, welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us. We have all sorts of podcasts. Go listen to season one of our show. It's totally different than this, and you'll mm -hmm. love it. It's going to be amazing. But uh, this is 100 Days of Q's and A's, where we answer your questions every single day. That's right. And today's show is brought to you by audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. Go there. Get a free book on us. Audio book. Please. Get an audio book on us. Do it now. Get your brain We bigger. love you by giving you a free audio book. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay. And three of you guys have done it. We have, <laughs> let's see, I think 200 impressions. Only three of you did it. Get your audio book. For Come reals. On. Okay. So we do a couple things. We pray. We do a past gratitude. We do a, re a review of the day. And then we dive into questions. So I'm going to pray. Is that cool? Sure. All right. Thank you, God. Creator, for your blessings. Thank you for this weekend and this sun. Thank you for blessing us with many things, and I pray that this podcast is helpful to us, and it's helpful to other people, relationships, and individuals. Amen. Thank you. Amen. All right. <clears throat> we encourage you to do the prayer and past gratitude with your partners as well, and talk about the things we talk about. That's, That's right. It's a great way to connect. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you for doing the Enneagram stuff with the kids. You're welcome. That gave me, and now gives me insight into how to treat the kids. Mm -hmm. Especially because Mariner is like you, and Hattie's like me, and then Tough is different. So now I have an extra tool, <clears throat> which Enneagram is, to navigate how I love them, how I mm -hmm. treat them, how I am a dad to them. So yeah, I'm actually, cool. I'm really excited about it, and um, it was inspired by Aaron sent that thing uh, for sleep the Sleeping at Last podcast, which is freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started listening to that and the songs that the guy writes for the Enneagram numbers, which are really amazing. I was literally just crying when I listened to yeah. them. But uh, so I decided to do the Enneagram numbers for the kids just to see. And they might be slightly off, but they seem pretty, they seem pretty, pretty right pretty on. Uh, yeah, the Sleeping at Last podcast <clears throat> that she's talking about is a dude that writes music two different Enneagram types and it's really beautiful. And he has Chris, I can never remember. Chris Hertz. Hertz. I always want to call him like Hertz. <laughs> but he has them on the show. But anyway. Okay, um, let's go. So, no, I didn't get to say my thankful. Oh, yeah. I'm just thankful that you're you and I get to you be here to you. You can't say that anymore. You, can, have, to say, you have to say one that's more genuine. Oh, I know. I'm thankful that you actually really like yard sales and that you do well at them and that oh, you right. like are fun and you're sort of like this community human that my family doesn't know how Community to be. Human. And I like it. Like, people like you. It's good. Okay, so <laughs> thank you. We sold a bunch of stuff and made <clears throat> close to $2,000 selling our stuff that we don't need. Why are you telling people this? Because it's awesome. I'm I so love excited. You. Uh, you can find Sleeping at Last just on iTunes, like on the iTunes um, podcast thing. Or you can go on YouTube. Sorry, I'm answering a question on our Facebook or Instagram Live. So on YouTube, you can find the songs. And it is, yeah, the number two song makes mm. me cry. My best friend is a number two, and my sister's a number two, but my sister's gross. But my best friend is a number two. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, let's, let's read, the read the review of the day. day. So Good. this one is from Fuzzy Star Cloud, which I love that name. <laughs> Five stars. Love the honesty and openness. As a person who has been married for 19 years, this podcast is a blessing to me and my home. There aren't many places where people are open and honest about the reality of being in a long-term relationship. There are some profound blessings and significant challenges, and no couple is exempt from that. It bothered me to see some reviews of, that bash Mel. They obviously haven't listened to many episodes. Every person has flaws. Not every person is willing to address them, to share them with the world, and to make an honest effort to change. I love that Seth and Mel are accountable to one another and are willing to share the good, bad, and funny things with us. Thank mm. you for this review. That is one thing that when people say I'm like terribly mean, it's like that's the point of yeah. it's like seeing me it's change real. that. Sometimes so those negative reviews review. make me mad, not at the person, but at Mel. Because sometimes I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah, see, you're you, right. You do do this, Mel. You Mel. are so stupid. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the questions. Um, I was Ryan O'Neill. Ryan I didn't know that. Okay, let's get on task here. Um, my my husband has literally been afraid of me. He won't stand up to me and it drives me crazy. I'm the reason I've been so unhappy in marriage, but I've decided that I'm ready to change and that I'm ready to make my husband a priority. I can't believe I've missed out on so many good times because I chose to make them terrible. My husband has literally been afraid of me. He won't stand up to me and it drives me crazy. I would love any suggestions on how to help. So I wanted mm. to, so this is actually like a, a paraphrase thing. I kind of switched it around to have it make sense in a question form because it was sort of a conversation that I turned into a question, mm -hmm. but it really struck a chord with me because, good Lord, that is what I did to you. Right. Like, I didn't realize that 
I had been, um, I had essentially trained. It's like when you, when there's an abused dog, I had trained Seth to be afraid of me. I had like completely set you up for failure. And the second that he tried to do something, I would just be like, nope. Like I'd be all over him. Right. White on rice. And and not in a like emasculating way because I'm a pretty dude's dude, I guess. I like. You skin deer, you hunt. You yeah, I mean, you know, for spit. whatever. For, I spit, yeah. Right. For whatever that's worth, I'm a, I'm a guy. And yeah, I have been afraid of you and more emotionally afraid. I think punching me in the face didn't help anything. But. No. That has been a long process to get over. And I think, you know, as we've talked about... Okay, sorry, we're talking about ourselves. I'm totally sorry. We're supposed to answer the question. Okay, so from a woman's perspective, how can you help our friend here? Well, the first step of that is really accepting that... Mm-hmm. And, and she did. She says that she accepts that she made stuff miserable. Right. She made... she like it, It's like looking at your life and... Seeing all of the good blessings and then only focusing on the thing you don't have, mm-hmm. the thing you're upset about. And that's what I did. So that's why I wanted to address that. Mm-hmm. And she is seeing it. And it sounds that- like she is realizing I have been more of the problem than he has. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right? So okay. she's realizing that so and that the is step. the first step. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the second step, which is almost harder than realizing it, is stopping the behavior. Right. So, um, and there's, but then I think there's still several steps beyond that where it's like, I would have to see that my behavior was bad, but then I would have to have some sort of like insight to, okay, now how do I change that behavior without feeling inauthentic, which sounds really weird because what am I authentically a, a jerk? Right. I want to stay authentically a jerk. No, but I didn't know how to do it another way. But as we've talked about before, <clears throat> we get comfortable with a certain identity. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that identity is literally a coping mechanism and a mask to push people away mm-hmm. because we feel too vulnerable, so I'm going to be mean. Yeah. We feel too uncomfortable, so I'm going to be like, ah, tighten back up. Yeah. Right? Well, remember what we were talking about? I think it was at dinner last night where... So in my family, and I love my family, but there isn't, oh, right. like, you're you're not really welcome to be positive. So if you're positive and you're excited about something, you get made fun of. It's dangerous to be happy. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. and it's not that you, ke- like, I'm happy, but I can't be, like, overtly, like, gosh, I'm so excited. Because then someone will be like, oh, you probably get in a car accident on the way there. Or like just like, quit being silly. Oh, yeah, just, or just, like, just, that's okay, you, cool, you're really excited. you judge for it. Yeah, and so in that... I actually never really learned the skill of how to just be content, celebratory with people. I didn't know how to be kind of present in their differences well or any Mm -hmm. of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So what I'm guessing is that the person who wrote this question might have something similar to that where it's like, I don't know. All I know how to do is criticize. Mm -hmm. All I know, all I learned is you say what's wrong. You say how it could have been better. You say why you're disappointed by it. So That's what in, I learned. in a distorted way, which is, happens in tons of families, criticism is connecting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. But what does that leave you? It leaves you. It's like it's, it's like eating junk food, right? You don't feel good afterwards, and you sit down, and five years later, you're like, why is my family this way? Why can't mm-hmm. we just sit down and be normal mm-hmm. or whatever? And there's there's an emptiness inside, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought it, it's. It's weird because I didn't have the skill to do it differently Mm -hmm. and I had to hone that skill. But it started with understanding that I was doing it, understanding that I was steering the ship and then getting angry at you for not steering it. But I would literally never let you do it. You would always take the wheel. I would take the wheel from you. Don't go that way. And I took, why did you even try to, why did you go that way? So I would say, I want you to take control. Be manly, be blah. Mm -hmm. And then the second you tried, sorry cut you with my nail yeah, the second you tried I would take it away from you and then get mad at you and shame you for it right so and then that <clears throat> over years and years I'm like okay never mind for, forget I'm this, not gonna do it right? yeah and that's just that's not good yeah obviously. and so in that in the realizing and then the changing of the behavior I think this third step is like an acceptance of uh, can you stop reading <laughs> it's like an acceptance of um, that your partner will do it a different way than you, and that is equally as good as if you were to do it yourself. Right, so I think one of the big things is, if you actually want something, like if you were actually saying, hey, be manly, it is absolutely not an issue of me not being manly or husbandly enough. Yeah. It, I mean, that, that 
that could be part of it. But if you're if you're asking that, then you completely and utterly have to be willing to accept what you have been um, doing, doing to yeah. to keep that back, right? Uh-huh. Like I can say, Melanie, be more loving, be more kind. But if at every turn you try that, and I'm like, you didn't do it right. Mm-hmm. That was wrong. You know, then I have to go. You're, I'm a critical douche, right? <laughs> And then I have, I have to really be, be aware and accountable of how am I treating you. So if I'm asking you, then I literally have to be 100% prepared to, okay, if you are doing the thing that you asked me to do, I have to be aware of it. I think we had a really big fight about that recently because I was like, Melanie, I literally did this. And you like went through the back door and it was like something. And I was just going insane because, well, not insane, but I was like, I don't understand what this mm-hmm. is, right? So if you... Are demanding something you have to be completely willing to accept the gift or whatever the thing that you're getting does that make sense sort of but the thing that I wanted to say this imagery because I think it's really important to this topic is that so imagine that in our daily interactions you and I like so instead of being critical to Seth let's say I actually literally punch you when you're not looking right right and eventually a sucker punch I sucker punch you yeah when you're not looking but I'm like, what? Why? Why don't you stand next to me ever? <laughs> and you're like, well, what, I don't want to, you know. But right. you're like trying to emotionally be like, well, okay, my wife wants me to stand next to her, but when I do that, she hurts me. Right. But I'm like, look, I'm not gonna hurt you this time. Just stand next to me, and then when you're not looking, I sucker punch you. Right. Mm-hmm. You will eventually always be on guard. Right. I will. I, Melanie, will have created a like. Mm-hmm. An, an unsafe version of you like uh, you don't feel safe right so you feel afraid all the time mm-hmm. you're constantly guarding yourself and you're not going to be free and easy with me and relax because right. you don't want to get punched and then you're going to be discontent and ask the question why aren't you easy why, why aren't you, you free and relaxed yeah why can't you geez this is hitting home girlfriend why can't you just sit with me i'm mm-hmm. like because it's always because you're going to harm me it's yeah. kind of like, kinda like this it, have you guys if you have kids have you ever avoided your kids just for a you know a little bit because the second that they see you what do they do cry or ask for they something. ask you for something yeah. and I'm like forget it like I can walk into a room they've been in there alone for 30 minutes and they're like dad can we I'm like don't even <laughs> right can so we? then there's a, that's another dynamic that happens between couples sometimes you 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 want something mm-hmm. But you're not willing to fully accept it if I give it to you, and I'm like timid and stuff. So there might be a, a, a distancer dynamic. Going yeah, on. and on top of that too, like you just said, you want something. Mm-hmm. Often, if we can't find our own content, not even often, always, mm-hmm. when we can't find contentment in our own relationships and with our own choices and in our own life, we will never find it in our partner. That's right. So we are always going to look at them and see deficit. We're always going to look at our children and see deficit, whatever that is. Um, and so I think there's just like a bunch of keys. Like you have to acknowledge if you've caused the harm in your marriage, you've got to notice that you've done it. Then you need to start changing the behavior, which takes accepting that your partner's behavior is not going to be what your behavior was. Right. You cannot be an oppressive oligarchy. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and you can't blame your partner for what you're not I mean, you can. You can't blame your partner for your dis- the discontentment you feel. That's what I was doing. Right. So right. I, it was it was me perpetually like the question was saying like I made everything worse. I really did. I made everything worse. Blamed Seth. He's like I didn't do this, and I'm You're like Thanos. you fit. I am Thanos. That's not very funny. Oh gosh. <laughs> no, that was funny. Uh, but anyway, so I don't know. I just think there's a lot there where. Um, this does happen and it is a really vicious cycle because you can't stop if, if you don't stop yourself as the person who's causing the problems if you stop if you can't stop yourself from being Thanos mm-hmm. um, no one else can fix it for you and you will always just be trying to tear apart the universe there's always going to be Captain America you think, you're doing good. <laughs> you think you're doing the right thing uh, because you want everyone to like spoilers. bow down to you and oh yeah um, so yeah just and then I, I, I don't know advice. and then <laughs> quit Anyway, let's read some of the comments. There's been a bunch of comments. Okay. Um. The snap. <laughs> okay, let's see. Topher says, I relate to this question as the husband. I've always been pretty timid and my wife is stronger than any woman I've met. It's inspiring but also intimidating at times. That's right. So we're not saying that women or men can't be strong and take charge and be a leader. Mm-hmm. We're not saying that at all. 
that is a good quality, mm -hmm. I think. Like you can delegate and you can kick some when you need to, which is rad. However, if it's always, if you're always in kick some mode, why aren't you doing it this way? Why aren't you, then you are an oppressive oligarchy. Well, I don't right? want to delegate your spirit out of you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and as women, especially when there's this sort of like empowering movement going on, which I think is really great, mm -hmm. often you get this like, it's like you took a car and you just pedal to the metal and you're like, okay, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to do this. You're Watch. Going, and right? you're just like, annihilating things because you think that's how you should do it mm -hmm. and that's kind of what you feel because there's like anger in it or whatever yeah especially if you've been hurt I think that was the biggest thing is I had been hurt by you right. and so I sort of doubled down my efforts to let you know that I was not going to accept anything whatever mm -hmm. I wasn't going to accept you essentially hurt, hurt people hurt people right and I was doing that and there's this one oh, I forgot what I was gonna say oh no so in this case Remember to be a fruit salad. You have mm -hmm. amazing gifts. I have amazing gifts. And with that one episode with our friend Carla, Carla, she, you know, did like arms stretched out and she wanted to fill her Carla shaped space in the universe or whatever, you know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. in relationships, we I can make you feel like you're hunched down and you're not feeling your Melanie shaped space, right? Mm -hmm. And how good is our relationship when both of us are hunched down, not occupying our full space? Mm -hmm. It's not what it could be, no. right? So when we're both just arms stretched out or whatever the you know Seth and Melanie space looks like, then we're both running all, on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the best I can. You're doing the best you can. We're doing what we should do, yeah. right? And that's when it's really awesome. Yeah, and what's interesting about that is that um, that concept of filling your space and having like mm -hmm. a Seth-shaped space in the world, that is not just like a... Oh, when things are good, you should do that. That'd be cool. It's, and it's like not a selfish thing either. No, it's like if you don't do that, you are, you feel oppressed and depressed and sad. Like that is how we are designed. Mm -hmm. We are designed by some divine thing to be fully ourselves. It's like it's like a rose blooming God, and and someone else taking their hand and just crushing the petals and being like bloom. Right. Bloom. And you're, you're feeling the discomfort of like oh, I gotta stretch. Yeah, I gotta and stretch, that's I gotta stretch. And in a relationship. That doesn't last for long. Yeah. When I say not for long, I'm saying it can be like 5, 10, 15, even 20 years. I've had couples that have been married for 25 years that are like, Hate each other. I am done. <clears throat> right? Yeah. And yeah. But it's like, that's the thing, that's the imagery that I think of in that is like, Seth was trying to be himself. And I was like, you will not. And I just like, was literally like, stop being mm -hmm. you. And then going, why aren't you blooming? Right. You know? So it's here's like, a really interesting thing too. So this has major major family of origin implications so i i grew up feeling like i was never fully in my space you right allowed to be, yeah. and then usually we partner with people who we feel comfortable with even if that comfortableness is kind of dysfunctional mm -hmm. right so it's no wonder really that i was well i was attracted to you for many different reasons but maybe on some level you reminded me of the safety of my family of what i knew Kind of. Mm -hmm. Is this? Are you oh, make, you are mean you that? I, this? Yeah, I see. Right, and so uh, just on some level, I may have been looking for that, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's I was looking for it, and then also hating it at the same yeah. time because I've grown up for years and years and years mm -hmm. in that family of origin, thinking people are just always telling me what to do. Well, and I the don't. weird thing too is you would take it, I would dish it out, and you would take it because you knew how to take it, and I knew how to dish it out, right. and so it was nothing was. No generative good thing was happening there. It was just a pattern. Right. He knew how to take criticism, and I knew how to dish out criticism, and mm -hmm. so it was there. Someone wrote in the questions, what was our last argument, and how did we resolve it? Mm -hmm. um, our last argument was yucky, and Seth was very, very mean. You were mean. You were mean. You I, were was, mean. I was mean. I think I was stressed out and probably drank too much beer we were stressed out for sure because we were moving but I one of the things I did is I actually chose to leave the room and I was like you're not because Seth was in when I say he was being mean to me it wasn't like he was cussing me out or no, I mean it it's like rude. it's just something I'm not going to accept right. and um, I left the room and I literally like like neat, got down on the ground and put my face on the floor and I just prayed and pr and I don't mm. often do that but it was like I felt like something is so unbelievably wrong about this it's so uh it just felt like demonic that sounds stupid but it did mm. it felt like something has taken over Zeth and he wants me to die and I don't understand <laughs> well, it well, and it wasn't, it this wasn't is super that. weird and right. so I just was like I'm going to just pray about this um and we're going to whatever but my, the basically I think that's how we got over it was 
by removing ourselves from the situation, not continuing to talk. I went in there and prayed a bunch, and then I think we came back in and we talked about no, it. I knew that I was just... Yeah, being and that was, a that's a part of it. You knew you were being this, a jerk, and then we were able to resolve. This is lame. I said stupid stuff. I don't have a leg to stand on. Right? Mm-hmm. So, thanks for praying. Which I think, I think that happens every time Seth drinks beer. <laughs> not every time. No, no I'm sorry, uh, not every time. If we get in an argument and you had drank beer, right. you're really mean. But not, I mean, when I say that, I don't mean he's like not terrible, but... Anyway. We're being boring because we're enjoying what you're saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> Today was an awesome, this was an awesome one. I know, it was. It seems like we're getting into some deeper topics and you guys are... A huge part of that. A, a huge yeah. part of that. You are uh, helping us get there. So thank you. It's almost like you are facilitating it by sending in your questions. You Why? Are because your, your questions are real mm-hmm. and it's the real stuff. So we absolutely thank you. We're about 20 minutes today. Okay, we're going to do two calls to action and that's all. Thank you guys, you're awesome. Remember to go to audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage to get a literal free ebook. You can audio book, you can get anything you want. It's on us, do it. We've seen you a couple do it and we really appreciate it. So thank you so much. And oh, darn it, another comment. We'll read this one, then we'll do the other call. So when you guys have huge fights like that, how do you lay down your pride and come back and apologize and connect? I'm a lot like Melanie. I can tear my husband apart, but I can never come back and admit that I'm wrong and apologize. Mm-hmm. Okay then that's you can't blame your husband that you can't come back and apologize i'm just going to be real here like i'm really good at apologizing i literally have no problem of saying that was 100 percent my fault mm-hmm. i did it when when i really agree to that you know it's like mm-hmm. okay that i really blew that one i don't know if you're so good at that but how what can advice can you give to her uh, you have to imagine yourself doing it if you're not because that's what i had to do when you're not good at it which i was not my family never apologizes they don't even think they need to ever literally so I didn't learn the skill of apologies and they made me mad when Seth would do it right and I was like oh if you're so sorry why'd you do it that's that's what I would think yeah but so when it came to myself having to apologize to Seth I literally had to envision what that would look like I probably journaled about it too because I've done this work over lots of years um, but I would be like okay I'm gonna walk into the room these are the words I'm gonna say I'm going to say, I'm sorry I did this, and I'm not going to follow it with, but you did this, so uh, mm. right? And so I would really encourage you to literally envision yourself doing the action of apologizing. Walk through the steps mentally in your mind and rehearse it in your mind. Um, it's I'm, funny that you have to do that because I've n- never even thought of doing it like that. In I, I literally don't think yeah. my family has ever apologized for anything they've ever done. Any That's crazy. One, ever. It's like they think it's a flaw. I love my family, but it's like they think it's a flaw. Right. And so I don't have that skill. I don't have the skill of apologizing. I don't have the skill of being like uh, positively non-critical. Yeah. So I've had to literally envision myself doing the healthy thing um, because it's terrifying to me. Yeah. I will not do it because I'm so afraid. I'm like, ah. I can't Man. say I'm sorry. So that's a huge growth point for you. Would yeah. You, would you come along so yeah it's a you. lot that's um, awesome okay one more thing I have a question for a future episode send it to hello at anatomy dot com that's our email only we read it let's see I can apologize to anyone except my husband uh, yeah write it down one. that would be another option write it down. Write it I down. think you you envisioning yourself you you seeing what it looks like mm-hmm. in before you do it and then you practice it and that sounds dumb but you practice a speech you practice mm-hmm. a song you practice anything else there's no reason that you can't practice an apology it makes me think almost I have to almost apologize to myself to apologize to Seth if that makes Ooh, sense I have to like admit deep. to myself that I'm sorry for my own behaviors that I'm embarrassed by my own behavior so that they were hurtful and then have to come to Seth after I've processed processed that because if I haven't processed it I get mad at him again that makes me think that you have to maybe you have a hard time of accepting yourself like you have a hard time accepting the fact that you did something less than stellar. Well, kind of I thing. mean, think you about the saying? conversation I was saying yesterday where my family never thinks they're wrong. Mm-hmm. Like my dad could be do the worst parenting move on the planet and then somehow try to convince you it was the thing he meant to do. Right. Again, I love my father, but that is what I grew up with was I will manipulate this to make you think you're wrong. Want to see? Oh. And I can do it. All I got to do is fight long enough and I can do it. That doesn't mean I want to or that I know. It's not healthy, obviously. You know how oftentimes when we get in an argument or something like that, you say that I am doing to you what was done to me in my family of origin, yeah. and it makes me feel like crap, so why do you do it to me? Yeah. It makes me think, like, because we've talked about, you know, 
your family of origin and mm -hmm. stuff and how you just didn't have certain mm -hmm. things emotionally, I think sometimes you do that to me. We've never talked about it in that way. Yeah. Oh, we, for sure. We're that's doing pretty interesting. That. Yeah. Huh. That's really cool. Okay. But yeah, so please send it. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, th this is anything. awesome. No, Thank you for asking <laughs> the questions. But please send your questions to hello at anatomyofmarriage.com or you can uh, send them to us on Instagram or Facebook, whatever. You can, you know, do a private DM or whatever. Yeah, and DM us on, on Instagram. Anywhere, we anywhere you can so. do it. But thank you for joining us. Please go get a free audiobook for the love of Pete. That's They're right. so good. And then please rate and review the podcast on iTunes. We will read it on the show. 25 minutes, holy. It, yeah. It's like these things fly by. They're the best. It's we awesome. love it. Okay, we thank love you. Thank you so much. Catch you tomorrow. Have Bye. a great day. I don't know what to push. That one.